Hey, look, it's Mr. Brian Gallons. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you all join me in prayer, please? Supreme Architect of the universe, we invoke thy blessing at this time. May this meeting thus be conducted in peace and closed in harmony. Amen. Well, good afternoon, commissioners. Welcome all to the public business meeting of the Allegheny County Commissioners, Thursday, April the 3rd, 2014. Commissioners, are there any additions or deletions to our agenda? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the March 27th, 2014 public business meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner uh, Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Under the report of the president, I'd like to uh, read this news release. Coalition grows to 11 counties representing one, more than 1 million Maryland citizens. This week, Hartford County Executive David Craig joined the Maryland Rural Counties Coalition as an associate member, expanding the membership of the coalition to now consisting of 11 counties. The coalition comprises of Allegheny, Caroline, Carroll, Cecil, Dorchester, Frederick, Hartford, Kent, Somerset, Washington, and Wacomico counties, representing 1.2 million Maryland residents. On December 12, 2011, the governing bodies of Allegheny, County, Allegheny, Carroll, Frederick, and Washington counties announced the creation of the Maryland Rural Counties Coalition with its eyes towards the rural counties joining their ranks for the purpose of strengthening their policy-related standings in the halls of Annapolis. Since then, seven additional counties have now become members of the coalition. Maryland Rural, Rural Counties Coalition Chairman and Allegheny County President Mike McKay stated, we are tremendously pleased and honored that Hartford County has chosen to aid with their collective voice to the coalition. We look forward to working with Hartford County Exec David Craig along with the members of the coalition in our mutual goal to ensure that unique needs and perspectives of Maryland rural communities are taken into consideration during the decision-making process in Annapolis. Hartford County Executive David Craig states, rural Maryland often finds itself at a strategic disadvantage from the policy decisions made by the Maryland General Assembly. Our intent is to help balance the decision-making process in Annapolis so that the Maryland, Maryland's interests are strengthened and equated to the interests of non-rural Marylander. This can only be accomplished by working together in partnership through a strong alliance between Maryland rural counties. A charter coalition founding member and coalition executive board member, Frederick County Commissioner President Blaine R. Young noted, the 11 counties of our coalition, coalition represents more than 1 million residents and in our collective membership allows our jurisdiction. And in turn, the citizens of Maryland rural counties are bigger voice in Annapolis. Hartford County is in a unique position as a member of the Big Seven in Maryland, which consists of the six largest counties and Baltimore City. But they also have a very diverse jurisdiction that is both rural and urban and will provide a very distinctive perspective for the Maryland Rural Counties Coalition. Uh, gentlemen, this happened yesterday uh, with Hartford joining. Of course, the Rural Counties Coalition on Monday voted uh, to expand to associate members. And this is the first county, and I expect two or three other counties to be joining um, in the near future. So some good news about the strength of rural counties and their voice down in Maryland, down in Annapolis, I should say. Okay, gentlemen, we're gonna do our pr proclamations <coughs> first. And the first proclamation is for the week of young child in Allegheny County, uh, Miss Darlene Schmidt. How are you? Would you please, um, if you'd like to say a few words and before we give you this proclamation? Yes, ma'am, right there, if you feel comfortable. 
Well, I want to thank you very much for doing this. Uh, I represent the uh, Western Maryland AEYC, which is the Association for the Young Child, which is a part of the National Association for the Young Child. And we feel that the education of young children is very important beginning at birth because uh, children's brains are developing at that time and we just appreciate your proclaiming this the week of the young child. Wonderful. Thank you. Would you join us up here for this proclamation, please? Right in the center, please. Okay. Commissioners, this uh, proclamation reads as follows. Allegheny County Government, whereas the Maryland Association for the Education of Young Children Western Maryland chapter and other organizations in conjunction with the National Association for the Education of Young Children are celebrating the Week of the Young Child in April. And whereas these organizations are working to improve early learning opportunities, including early liter literacy programs and can provide a foundation for the learning of children in Allegheny County, Maryland. And whereas Teachers and others who make a difference in the lives of young children in Allegheny County deserve the thanks and recognition, and whereas public policies that support early learning for all young children are crucial to young children's futures. Now, therefore, we, as the County Commissioners of Allegheny County, do here proclaim April 6th through the 12th, 2014, as the week of the young child in Allegheny County, and encourage all the citizens to work to make a good investment in the early childhood in Allegheny County. With the great seal of Allegheny County and the three county commissioners affixed. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. This way we'll get a picture. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Let's hold them off. Okay, we have one more. This is Fair Housing Month. Mr. Nedved. Oh, you're all going to stand? Yes, because you're going to talk. So that means I'll, be, I'll have to be quick. Yeah, please. <laughs> Would you like to do the proclamation first? Would that help? Yes, please. Okay, let's do that first. <laughs> Come up there, Courtney. He has a lot to say. Yeah, no, I don't Everything's have a lot. Everything's highlighted in. <laughs> Will you just gouge him then? I, I can do that. I'm not Cheap. sure it'll be good for us. You're on my board, so you know yeah. that. It'll be fine. <laughs> this one, take outside. Actually, here, I'm going to have you stand next to okay. the Yeah, that's more important. Okay. Allegheny County, Maryland, whereas the county commissioners of Allegheny County join with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in celebrating the 46th anniversary of the Fair Housing Act of 1968. And whereas the 1968 Fair Housing Act guarantees the right of all Americans to dwell in a neighborhood of their choice and one of the most <clears throat> important components of our national civil rights policy. And whereas, and even though this non-discriminatory policy is the law of the land and is properly enforced requires the continued cooperation of all levels of government, the real estate and home building industries and private citizens. And whereas throughout Maryland, the spirit of cooperation is being provided through the efforts of our federal, state and local governments and with the support of the countless communities and nonprofit organizations. And whereas promoting equal housing opportunity is essential to the larger mission of promoting justice in the areas of life for all citizens and equal housing opportunity has drastically impacted the school integration and the acceptance and understanding of ethnic and racial diversity. Now, therefore, we as county commissioners of Allegheny County do hereby proclaim April 2014 as Fair Housing Month in Allegheny County and urge all citizens to join in creating and promoting fair housing and the opportunities for all people. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands to be set on the great seal of Allegheny County, Maryland, 
to be affixed this third day in April in the year 2014. Signed by all county commissioners. Congratulations, Courtney. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you did. All right. Yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> that way I can handle it for you. Well, let me uh, Is there <laughs> so, something I missed? Let me just point out, of, I want to, commission, commissioners, all I want to do is briefly. This is not open mic night. <laughs> all I want to do is briefly touch on programs are, that are available for the citizens of Allegheny County. I want to talk about the great partnership that Allegheny County government has with the with HRDC with the Human Resources Development Commission headed by Courtney here and um, I want to talk about the fact that we are we have a partnership with HRDC for homeless and transitional which includes emergency assistance and placement transitional living arrangements and assistance in finding permanent housing through apartment finding and credit arrangements we also have programs for affordable housing where Allegheny County owns and HRDC manages rental housing for eligible residents throughout Allegheny County, eligibility based on family size and occupant income. We also have programs for rehab housing where we provide residential rehabilitation for low and moderate income families in Allegheny County. We also partner with HRDC on Sacrifice Monthly Rental Assistance for Low Income house Families and we also partner on rental allowance, which provides monthly rent assistance for low income families who are homeless or have emergency housing need. And lastly, one, of, uh, one other program I, I'd like to point out uh, is the Maryland Mortgage Program, which allows people to basically first time buyers or actually anybody uh, that wants to buy a house to basically get a low interest mortgage in Allegheny County because we're a target area. And now I'd like to hand over the mic and get out of the way. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to embarrass him because he forgot one. What did I forget? The foreclosure assistance program, uh, which, which is one of our newer programs. And, and unfortunately, there is a growing need for foreclosure counseling here in this community. But we do have the capacity to provide the foreclosure counseling and also work directly with servicers to help people maintain their homes. But what I would really like to do tonight is to thank the county for their partnership and their ongoing support of HRDC and our programs, specifically in housing. I shared with David before the meeting that we're very fortunate here in this county to have such a group of active commissioners who are very involved in the community and the things that are happening here, as well as a very knowledgeable and supportive county staff. I can tell you that when I go downstate and I'm interacting with my counterparts from community action agencies across the state, this doesn't always occur. And it makes my job and our agency's job much easier because of that support and ongoing assistance from you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Well, that's nice. I know Commissioner Brody, who's on their board, is very active. Of course. Bill participates at the senior program, and um, and I'm hoping at the senior prom I'll have my dance card filled coming up. So they promised me lots of good food. So I don't know. Anyhow, all right. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Anyhow, item number one, gentlemen, presentation: the safety range development project. Uh, who is gonna speak first? Mr. Young, or is it gonna be Chief Dick? <coughs> Can I close this without breaking anything? That's right, I'm fine with it, I'm fine. Good evening, commissioners, Mr. Eberly, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening as we discuss the proposal or the, the concept of pot potentially building or establishing a public safety multi-use or multi-functional safety range on county property at uh, PPG Road, Mexico Farms. Uh, I'll, tr I'll try to touch a little bit on 
why I think we should build it, the need for it, and how it potentially can be used. Uh, I, I think it's, it's certainly, <laughs> I start off by simply saying, Allegheny Sh County Sheriff's Office does not have a range facility at this time, have never had a range facility, and it creates tremendous logistics problems for them trying to get adequate range time in. They're using ranges that belong to other organizations, other agencies. They're limited with their time, but they're also limited with some of the training and some of the type of shooting situations, training situations that they're able to use the ranges for. So it, it's a, it creates a difficult situation for them. I can't overemphasize or overstate the importance of modern quality training for public safety personnel, especially law enforcement personnel. Quality training equates to professional law enforcement, equates, equates to respected law enforcement, professional agency. It's important to our citizens who receive the services, but it's equally and cr critically important to our first responders, to the deputies, the law enforcement officers, personnel as well, because it enhances their safety also and their well-being. So I, I think it has to be a priority. We currently have, and we've used it for several years now, the public safety complex or the public safety building at Lower PPG Road. Now this is a, an excellent facility. It's a large facility. Uh, it, it houses several different entities, including HAZMAT, Emergency Medical Services, Emergency Management, the backup 911 center is there. It has two well-equipped high-tech uh, training with high-tech classrooms with great training aids, most of which I should point out also were paid for by grant funding, and it is a great place for training. Regular training on a, on a, a literally monthly, weekly basis occurs at that facility for firefighters, law enforcement, EMS, hazmat, the whole nine yards. It's a great facility, but it's basically limited what we can do now to classroom use only. Now, I'm certainly not we're certainly not trying to eliminate or get rid of classroom type training. That's a critical part of, of law enforcement training and public safety training as well. But the missing component, especially for, for an agency like the Sheriff's Office, has been a modern use range where they can do and put some of the things they get in the classroom to usage on the range training. Uh, not a lot of ranges, there's truly not a lot of firearms ranges available in Allegheny County. Most of the ranges that do exist in Allegheny County and ones that they've used were built many, many years ago before modern law enforcement training techniques came into being. A lot of those ranges have a simple berm like that wall over there, not much of anything on the sides, and they're designed for basic standing and shooting or standing, sitting at a bench sometimes and shooting. And that doesn't equate to good <coughs> modern firearm practices and training today. Um, Training has changed greatly in recent years. It's dynamic now and it's as realistic as possible. Uh, moving and shooting, getting off the X. If you're standing still when you're shooting or you're standing still if you have an actual gunfight, you're in trouble. So they train with shooting and moving training that, that really fits what happens every day in everyday life when firearms situations occur. Uh, multiple targets, shooting in multiple directions. Every agency, and I know the Sheriff's Department does, they emphasize now judgmental training, shoot, don't shoot type situations. And that takes a special type of range to accommodate as well. Now we have used a couple of ranges, and I, I gotta commend Deputy Dixon, he's here this evening with the Sheriff. He and, and Israel Sibley, Dep Deputy Sibley, and I've shot it several times over the years, they put together a judgmental shooting, shoot, don't shoot course, and this is some of the best training you can get. They did it literally with some two befores, some cardboard, some strings, some gongs, a few things like this. And I'm telling you, when you go through that course at the end of it, you are stressed out just like you would be in a real scenario, a real situation. You've probably got, I don't know, $25 in materials there but it's well done and it shows what can be done if they had a, a range where they could really put something together effectively, a range like we're talking about, they would really have something special. Um, it works well now, but it certainly could be expanded on with this proposed range. Every agency, if they're not emphasizing it now, the use of non-lethal weapons, the use of less than lethal force is, is big in 2014 and should be. We deal with a lot of people with mental illnesses, a lot of people with a variety of issues, 
and, and, and you know, the last thing you want to do is use lethal force. So there's a lot of emphasis now on non-lethal force and non-lethal training. This facility, again, will prove invaluable for that type of training for the sheriff's office. Um, I'm talking about things like tasers. I'm talking about things like bean bags that are placed in shotgun shells and other types of weapons that instead of shooting a person with a projectile, you shoot this bean bag out and it literally, it, it has like lead pellets in it basically. They're heavy and they hurt, but it hits the person and it disables them. You're able to take them into custody. But you have to have special places to do that kind of training. Simunitions training. And if you're not familiar with simunitions, what that amounts to, and it is really realistic good training as well, and it teaches you quickly if you have bad habits to eliminate those bad habits. You'll take the, the deputy or the officer's regular service weapon and they replace some parts in it to render it incapable of firing an actual live projectile. But what it does file, fire are these little simunition pellets like they look like something like an eraser on the end of a pencil and it, they use a lot of cover and concealment and movement and so forth. It's defensive and offensive, that type of thing, but I can tell you right now, when you get swatted with one of those things, it's like a hornet's sting or something, and they leave a great welt, and you quickly learn to use cover and concealment and those type of things. This facility will really play into using that type of situation down there as well. It doesn't cost a lot for simunitions training once you get the equipment, but it pays big dividends, but you have to have the places to do it. The facility we're talking about in Lower PPG Road will be perfect because we'd have both outdoor and indoor type situations where it can be used. Uh, high risk traffic stops. This would be a great place to, to function the vehicle takedowns and so forth training down there. And again, it's the type of facility that, that's designed in such a way, and Steve Young will talk a little bit about that when he gets up here, that really plays into this type of training. I, th I think we're looking at a really, really nice facility that every effort has been made to, well, and I'll, I'll let Steve get into that, but again, we're not talking about spending a great deal of money to do this. The county owns the property and so forth, and we're talking about <coughs> placing it there, and, and I think it's going to be a major asset. This will be a closed range, unless the county feels differently about it. By that I mean it will be fenced, it will be safe, it will be protected and secure. Uh, but it can and certainly would be available to other public safety agencies, other law enforcement agencies to use, and it would be a great benefit to them as well. It's available and hopefully should be used for multi-agency training, interagency training as well. It's more than just there for law enforcement also. There's plenty of things that fire EMS or some training together with EMS personnel and law enforcement together when you're talking hostage barricade situations or other active shooter situations, that type of thing. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, I, when I talked about multi-usage, one that I, I think I, don't, I didn't mention, canine training, a great place to, for agencies to cra train canine dogs, attack training, discipline training. We have used it down near the facility for drug detection and so forth, and that can all be tied together in one nice package for canine training. So again, it, it's a multi-function, multi-usage, far more than just a firearms range. It has been mentioned, and again, it would certainly be up to the commissioners and the sheriff and so forth, the possibility of opening this range up occasionally or in certain scheduled days for public usage. And that certainly could be done. Obviously, you would want county personnel, range officers, or somebody there. But I think there, there, there could be an advantage to opening it up on scheduled days. It doesn't have to be you know, every month or anything like that, where new firearms owners in Allegheny County, maybe females that have purchased a firearm but never really shot a lot, where you could do a class that involves safety and familiarization. And I would say these classes, 80% of it should be on safety and firearms familiarization. And then you can take them actually out on the range and fire a few rounds for familiarization and, and emphasize the safety skills. I think there potentially could be an advantage of that, but again, that would be up to the county and the sheriff to, to work <laughs> something like that out. But uh, I, again, I think we're gonna get an awful lot of bang for the buck for this range, and I don't think we're talking probably a great deal of money, so. Okay. Was that a pun? Bang for your buck? I threw that in there. My wife says I don't have a sense of humor. So. <laughs> <laughs>
And not just this one, <clears throat> what we have on the projector here is a kind of a, a first uh, shot preliminary design for the facility. Uh, just to give you a little information, this is the public safety building right here. This is the garage behind the building. In this yellow area is a, an existing paved parking lot behind the building. <clears throat> so, and the CNO canal would be down here at the bottom of the page. Uh, the facility that we're looking at, <clears throat> the direction of fire would be from the northwest to the southeast. And if you continue on that direction of fire, there are no structures uh, down, down range of, of the firing. Uh, in fact, if you go out 1,500 yards, there's a mountain there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually in West Virginia, but it's, there's nothing in between. What the yellow lines are here, this would actually be a basin. So you would walk out of the back of the building here down into the shooting range. <coughs> The bottom of the shooting range, the elevation of the bottom, would be dictated by drainage so that we'd be able to get water draining out of the basin on down toward the canal. The width of the, of the so basically this inside yellow line is a flat area. The target area out here is about 100 foot wide and it's about uh, 25 yards this way. You can't use this stupid thing. Uh, <laughs> But we also have the capability of moving back and firing at 100 yards. So from the, there down to here is 100 yards. This berm on the right-hand side is a 20-foot high berm. On this side, the canal side, is a 10-foot high berm. And there's also a berm that wraps around uh, on this side. And as uh, Bobby mentioned, the facility sh should be fenced. Uh, there's about 7,000 yards of material to, to move. And the actual width of this flat area would be dictated by some site constraints. Uh, there are some water and sewer lines down here in the bottom that we can't cover up too much. But more from a standpoint of how much dirt we need to build the berms. So we just widen it out to get the dirt that we need. And uh, so that's pretty much the, the, the design. We've met with, uh, with uh, the uh, shooting officers and, and lobby several times. And I think we're kind of honing in on things. There are some, some other uh, amenities that we'd like to see at the facility, some pavilions, some uh, buildings for storing targets and things like that, um, and some different access points. But all in all, I think this is a really good place to have this kind of range. There are no, uh, there, there are businesses obviously nearby, uh, but there are no, uh, no homes in, in uh, probably half to three quarters of a mile of this facility. Okay. Steve, um, with respect to the design standards that you followed here, um, uh, what, what authorities did you rely upon to uh, come up with this thank design? You. I didn't mention that. I brought my notebook with me. And this, we're designing this in accordance with the NRA uh, range manual. Okay, so that dictates the, kind, the way you build your berms, the way you, you set up your shooting. So we're trying to follow their, their uh, dictates, and I would say that they're probably recognized as the authorities in this area. Okay. Now, with respect to the actual construction of this project, I know Paul Kale's in the back and we've talked about this, but the uh, actual construction, um, well, this could be done by county staff. The roads crew could go in with a they with upgrader and a loader. The, and they certainly have the expertise and, and the equipment to, you know, to try mm -hmm. to, to tackle this kind of a, of a project. Uh, the, the fencing would be something that would mm -hmm. need to be done commercially for sure. What's the next step? A lock and load. <laughs> Commissioner, before we turn dirt and um, move on this project, uh, we wanted to discuss it with you publicly and uh, get your input and uh, answer any questions that you might have uh, uh, on this on this initiative, and we'll take the next one. Well, I'm going to lead this one off because I want to personally thank everyone's hard work they put into this. It was about a year and a half ago or so that the sheriff and Deputy Dixon invited us all down to a range where they was using, which I was actually... I don't even know how to explain it, maybe surprised that what they was actually training with, because I have a much better place at my house to shoot than what law enforcement has. So uh, at that time, I spoke with Mike and Bill and yourself, and, uh, and here we are today. So uh, I know that it's been, it seems like it's been a long time and it's been slow, but I know there's been a lot of hard work put into this. So mm -hmm. I'd like to see us be able to take action on this tonight and move ahead with it. Uh, commissioners, we do have uh, uh, Deputy Dixon here with us this evening and the sheriff. I didn't want to know if you guys had any observations, any comments that you would like to enter into the record um, this time.
Are you undercover tonight or something like that? Just basically echo what the chief said uh, and the information, but uh, I do want to stress the, the issues that we've had like, lately with uh, law enforcement. You know, we utilize different areas in Allegheny County, uh, a range in back of uh, WCI and MBCI. But the problems that we have is with our range instructors, uh, uh, we're only allowed to use it a couple days out of the year and uh, you know that's that's all we have available to us uh, so it's been a real restraint to us by by basically relying on everybody else to do our training and again there's nothing more important than to make sure the individuals we're putting out there are well trained uh, in both <laughs> lethal and, and non-lethal so uh, it's a wonderful project uh, it's something that we really do need here in Allegheny County and again I do as the chief was saying I, I do recognize that part about the citizens I think it'd be a wonderful thing to if we have individuals that do have firearms in their in their homes, I personally would like to see them um, to be trained to know how to operate. You know, if they're going to keep them in their homes to protect themselves and also even protect themselves and be safe with these weapons. So I think it'd be a wonderful thing to open up every once in a while throughout the year to the citizens. Uh, many people call and, and tell me they have, you know, where can I go shoot? And it's really hard to uh, to give them any locations that they can actually go and fire a. A, a firearm, so I think it'd be a wonderful thing for the public too to utilize and be more than welcome, uh, or be more than uh, happy to to do that with our training officers and provide that particular training. Sheriff, quick question for you concerning range rules. I believe the NRA has established range rules for facilities such as this. Um, would we be able to just do do a cut and paste uh, of some of those uh, of those? Um, yes. Um, <coughs> by the city of Frostburg. Mm -hmm. It is shared with the Big Savage Sportsman Club and Piney Mountain Sportsman Club, President Vero. They do up there, if Melissa has one coming up at the end of this month, a uh, open class for anybody who wants to do what you do, who has never fired a handgun or who wants to think about purchase one or has one that grandpa left to you. Uh, it's open to the public. They do it all day, one day. Uh, I will get you the date on it off of her. I don't have it on me right now. But we also, within that group, have probably 20, 25 NRA certified range safety officers. If you wanted to do this, if you want to set up a day like that, with Bill, you need a couple just to be there and you can qualify a bunch of people. We'll be more than glad to come help, help you work with it. So the help is there, and if you check with the boys of Crossburg, they have the manual up there, everything that covers what you need. It's already set up for the range up there. We can make arrangements to get you to the NRA. Okay. Commissioners, uh, this was a um, an item that we were at one point in time hoping to discuss with you at a work session, uh, but because of scheduling conflicts, um, um, we threw it on a public business meeting uh, agenda. And um, if you're okay with this, um, um, we could put it on an agenda to take official action next week. It's fine. At our, at our meet, and um, so that people would have an opportunity to comment uh, if they so choose. We're in consensus. Yes, sir. Okay. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Something needed. Okay. All right. Next week. Thank you all involved. <coughs> I have sir, there was a gentleman who raised his hand right here. Do you have a? How much is this project? Sir, we would. Uh, we Okay, we, uh, we believe that uh, all the, uh, this is going to be a cut and fill project. All the mound work that will be done will actually be taken from the site, and we believe that our roads department could actually do this project in probably a week to 10 days. Uh, the cost that we do not have identified at this point in time will be the construction of the fence around the perimeter of the facility. That's something we will need to be working on here in short order. We, would, we would know that number before we voted on it next week. Chief Bobby. I believe you're right. Okay, good. All right. Commissioners, item number four in our public hearing. This is the 2013 amendment to the 2011 Allegheny County Water and Sewage Plan. Mr. DeWitt. Good evening, Good evening sir. sir. 
I'll keep this brief here. I'll give you just a brief background of what we're doing here and what the purpose of the hearing is this evening. Uh, as required by Comar, we need to do an annual review report of our water and sewage plan. It's an important document. Uh, most projects need to be listed in that document uh, to be eligible for funding from Department of Environment or USDA, uh, which is how the county uh, gets a lot of its money to do utility projects. Um, so last fall, we started this process. Uh, this is the 2013 amendment cycle. Obviously, we're in 2014 now. The bulk of the amendments were gathered last fall. There were some issues we were waiting to try to get some resolution to include them. Uh, but then at the start of this year, we just decided to, to move forward. Later this fall, we'll be doing a comprehensive revision to the whole plan, which will be much more extensive and uh, require some more review time. But uh, the main purpose of doing these amendments uh, annually is to include projects that aren't in the plan that need to be to be eligible for funding. So we send out feelers to our stakeholders, which is county, obviously, and then uh, towns, municipalities, private system owners, to see if they have projects that need to be added to the plan in the, in the interim in between the uh, larger rewrites, and then we add them in to the plan through a corporation of a resolution uh, to get them as an official part of the plan. So we have a few projects from the town of Lonaconing, uh, a few projects from the town of Westernport, and county utility projects uh, that will be added uh, in this amendment cycle. Um, the amended plan and the revision synopsis is on our website posted, accessible for anybody to view. Um, at this point tonight, we'll be having a public hearing to accept comments or questions, and uh, we'll assuming no large changes need to be made that require a lot of time, uh, we'll be planning on adopting uh, those amendments with your approval at the public meeting next week. So at this time, I'd open up uh, the public hearing for any comments or questions uh, about the water and sewer plan amendments for 2013. Looks like we didn't have anybody sign up. Ed, you put several here. Was that one of the issues you want to talk no. about? Okay, all right. Is there anybody else? Okay. Well, Officially have its uh, hearing closed. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Commissioners, under our action agenda, item number five is the River Road over CNO Canal Bridge project, bridge number A 084. Good evening, Mr. Gale. Good evening, Commissioners. How are you? What we're asking for tonight is permission for uh, the commissioners to authorize um, the Public Works Department to move forward with an MOU with the CSX. Um, get my pointer out here. CSX needs to replace a bridge across the Potomac River. Let's see if I can do this better than Steve did. Um, <laughs> this bridge here, there's a the Potomac River. The CSX needs to replace this bridge here. It's old and dilapidated and needs repaired. Um, to do that, they need access to get in there and do the work. Uh, we have a bridge here that crosses the canal, and what they've agreed to do to get access, that bridge needs to be upgraded so they can get the equipment in. And they've agreed to uh, pay for the design, uh, fund the construction, and fund the inspection of our bridge. So basically, the county will get a brand new bridge out of this at, at no cost to us. So it's kind of a no brainer. Um, so we're asking permission for you to authorize a signing MOU. And we will be installing back this road here, it serves the um, fire bridge ponds. And also, I think there's two or three farms back there. There right. will be a temporary bridge uh, constructed so that there, there will, nobody will be isolated. And uh, that will be part of the construction mm -hmm. process. So, if you have any questions? No. Bill, you want to bring up the one question that was brought to you? Uh, this is being built by CSX, not by the county. Because I was asked by a person today, why in the world is the county building a railroad bridge? Okay. Yes. <laughs> CSX is building this bridge here. And so. Just just for clarification. Yes. Uh, so. And, and actually, it should be exciting. building a new bridge for us. Yes. And it, uh, it's exciting for our engineers. We're going to try to get down there and visit. <coughs> I think they're planning on trying to haul in this bridge already put together and going to try to put it up in two or three days. So we're anxious oh, cool. to see that process. But uh, it's a bigger project than we're used to. You need help? Absolutely. You want me to come on down? <laughs> Make to watch, great, he'd make a great flotation what you, device. What See, that's what we're doing. That's all we're what? doing. I was going to say, is there a launch or something being served there, or what? <laughs> okay. Yes, the county is not building this bridge. Yes, okay. All right. 
No, that, that's important. When we had somebody ask that question, we need to get that clarification for the, for the citizens. So, okay, commissioners, unless there's any questions, I'd like to entertain a motion to authorize the Board of County Commissioners uh, to have the President sign a memorandum of sign, uh, understanding between CSX Transportation and Allegheny County to replace bridge number A-084 over the north branch of the Potomac River. Is there a said motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Mr. Everly, what do we have on our consent agenda this evening? Commissioners, we have three items on the consent agenda this evening. Uh, one relates to a travel request. We have a um, procurement uh, uh, project we'd like to get started concerning the building out in front uh, for the sheriff's office and a request for proposal for uh, our solid waste and recycling program. Any questions for the administrator? No? No. I'd like to entertain a motion that we accept our consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. you have anything on your desk there, Mr. Everly? Uh, commissioners, uh, just a uh, point of clarification here. There is a uh, news release for our 2015 budget schedule uh, attached to the package uh, here this evening. And just to let everybody know that your first uh, public budget workshop will take place next Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock in room 212. The, um, uh, the scope of our presentation next week will deal exclusively with revenues. Revenues. Just the revenue side. Okay. All right. Mr. Rudd, I have nothing. thank you for attending. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioners, any comments, please? I do, sir. I have, uh, Mr. Everly, you attended a meeting recently, about a week and a half ago, with a, uh, pertaining to a CSO project down in the uh, city of Cumberland's looking into. And if you would, sir, if you would give us a brief update of the outcome of the meeting, then I have some, I think maybe some comments on that. So. Sir, if you would. No, okay. Just. Well, there were uh, a number of uh, government jurisdictions uh, that uh, attended that meeting that day. The City of Cumberland um, uh, hosted the forum, and the, that day the uh, representatives from Whitman Recort and Associates were on hand to discuss the, um, uh, the first, uh, first phase of a three-phase project uh, for the town. Uh, as a result of the combined sewer overflow consent decree that the city of Cumberland entered into back in the 90s. Um, this is a massive project. Uh, the first phase of the project uh, consists of a uh, public investment of $30 million. Uh, the, the total build out of all three phases would be something in the order of $90 million. Um, uh, as you know, commissioners, uh, in the past few years, the county has gotten its arms around about $20 million worth of its SSO requirements under the consent decree. And um, we have been able to do that, fortunately, as our system is laid out in a, in a more incremental fashion than the city of Cumberland is uh, uh, thinking, considering uh, doing with its pro program here. But um, it was, um, it was a, a great presentation. Uh, the uh, Maryland representatives from the Maryland Department of the Environment were there, uh, answered questions. Uh, there was some candid dialogue that went back and forth between uh, many of the jurisdictions. But the long and short of it uh, is that John DeFonso, the Director of Public Works for the City of Cumberland, uh, admitted during the presentation that the first phase of this project is not something that the residents of either the City of Cumberland or Allegheny County users can afford to do. So the conundrum for us is to embark upon a $90 million initiative and the, um, the honest observation by all parties there that it is going to be a stretch for us to even find a way to afford the first third of this project. And so if you take a look um, at the residents of the city of Frostburg, the residents of the Braddock Run area, <coughs> Eckert, LaVale, um, Bedford Road, Jennings Run, um, uh, they would be considered at some point in time a funding partner uh, to, to help facilitate the completing this project. And 
unless there's you know a grant share very similar to what Allegheny County and the city of Frostburg have been fortunate to get in recent years, and that's something in the ballpark of a 75-25 split, um, this project is not financially feasible. And it puts everybody in quite a conundrum. And, um, and needless to say, for the past um, three or four months, we've been having some informal and formal discussions concerning uh, the surprise that, that we had learning uh, initially that um, the county and its residents would have to bear a portion of the cost. Uh, what that portion would be would be negotiated. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it is a huge project and currently uh, the state of Maryland does not know of a funding source to help assist with uh, this project. Well, I'm gonna give everyone just a little bit of background on this because I've been thinking about this for a week and a half. Back when I first heard of this in December, we asked the delegation to look into this. Mm -hmm. I did, I mm -hmm. threw it right out there at the delegation meeting. Uh, a, a several months later, I got a call from Delegate Beitzel uh, the, the, he was looking at this and, and he agreed. Uh, I had uh, asked some engineers what they thought of this project and he said we're going to have a meeting in Annapolis. Well, I went down to the meeting in Annapolis for, for a meeting on this and it was canceled that day. Of course, they canceled it the morning when we had already left. So, uh, and Senator Edwards was, was hosting the meeting and, and his recommendation was when, for the city to get a, to get a hold of every player at the table and set up another meeting at, at, as, uh, when they could. Well, I think that our staff got notification on a Friday afternoon of a meeting that was going to take place Wednesday that us three was not invited to, which was one real sticking point with me. And then the real others, and I'm going to call uh, Paul Kale up here in a minute because we're going to ask him some questions on this. But the real sticking point to me was, sir, you was to relay a quote to us three on this subject. And do you remember what that quote was? Uh, I think I can remember what that quote was. Because I read it in the paper the next morning, to, and I believe it was what not to well, forget. I, I don't know where it was quoted or if it was quoted, but uh, we were asked to remind the Board of County Commissioners that the residents of the City of Cumberland are also county residents. And, and I, I looked on the map, and sure enough, they're right. City of Cumberland is in Allegheny County, which was why I brought this up in the first place because this 90 plus million dollar project will actually fall back on the majority of this cost to the residents of the city of Cumberland if funding is not available, if they proceed with this. Because we're 13 years into a 20 year consent a, a, a agreement that so far the city of Cumberland, LaVale Sanitary Commission and Allegheny County has spent a lot of time in, in correcting our own problems that they have not. You mean Frostburg? Yeah, city yeah, Frostburg. yeah, yeah, city of Frostburg. I'm sorry, because <clears throat> ever since I read that article for a week and a half, I've just been burning at the collar. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, if you mind, would you mind coming up here to the podium tonight? <clears throat> because one of the other issues that was brought to our attention is, is that we knew this was going all along. And, and we didn't step in to advise any. So if you would, please, sir, would you do me a favor and reach out to uh, John DeFonso and offer some assistance in this? Because I have a very good relationship with the mayor and council of Cumberland, but I think that they're being led, and this is just personally, down the wrong road. And I know the city uh, residents don't want strapped with this, because this does, and stop me if I'm wrong, this does nothing to address their current infrastructure whatsoever. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest issues we discuss. What they're doing is they're adding to their infrastructure. They're not, so in some point down the line, 20 years, who knows the answer to that, they're going to replace an infrastructure that's very old now that they'll have to spend additional money on. This creates new infrastructure that they'll have to maintain but does not replace one piece of old infrastructure. And by myself, if I was City of Cumberland, I would not want to head down that road because they're kind of delaying a problem and pushing it further down the road, in my opinion. And, and not only does it not separate nothing and, and doesn't really fix nothing, there's also above the capital cost, there's going to be an operating cost associated w with this, correct? Absolutely. They'll have to pump this at certain stages. It will store it, then they'll have to pump it back into the system. So, yes. So, actually, what we're trying to design is something to effectively uh, treat rainwater 
because uh, essentially that's what it is. And, and for those who don't know, <coughs> when, when all these sanitary districts was built in the 60s, they was originally designed so that the streams didn't get septic through the summer. And they was designed with the intention of during heavy rain flows and stuff of discharge. And that's, the City of Cumberland's had an infrastructure in place probably since the 1880s. And, it, and that's what it was designed for. Everything was to go into one pipe, and, and then when we started the, the plants and stuff in the 50s and, and everything, it was designed so that wood overflow. Well, we decided then, the state did, that that's not going to be allowed to happen anymore. So Frostburgs went through a, a separation process, and, and they keep chewing a little bit each year. Uh, the county and LaVale Sanitary Commission really never did have a combined system, but since that we connect the two jurisdictions, we was considered that, and, and which has been very good, because we've got a lot of infrastructure updated, replaced, uh, a lot of leaking pipes out of the ground. But Cumberland hasn't addressed none of that. If they had, I think they probably did some smaller projects, but no large projects that I'm aware of. Yeah. Well, uh, st I think years ago, um, we were concerned about that we would spend millions and millions of dollars in the state, and the EPA would back off 20 years later and say, we can't fix these problems correct. because they're bigger than what we, and, and we've been attending national conferences. Uh, Steve, I think we started back in, we went to a Virginia conference, we went to Pittsburgh, just to see what's happening nationally. And, and we're, our fear is we're gonna, we would spend $20 million trying to fix a problem that 10 years later they'd say, Right. Well, we know we can't solve CSOs and SSOs, so we've been biting off a little bit at a time. We think that's the way, way to go uh, instead of trying to build a big project like this. They may invest that money and not have to, it may not solve the problem, or they may have invested $90 million that they didn't have to invest. Well, and, and that's really my biggest concern is, you know, every one of us sitting up here, including yourself, got, uh, was involved with the Georges Creek project, and at the very end, when we was talking about roughly $4 million, people was very upset that it wasn't vetted enough in public. We didn't know we was going to pay for this, and this and that. And this is one thing I want the people of Cumberland and of Allegheny County to know, is if we push forward with this, and this, this gets spread out amongst the users, it's going to affect everyone from Mount Savage to Frostburg and everyone it puts into that plant, including the citizens of Cumberland, which will be responsible if you normally do their split the, the way it was explained to me. Now, of course, I understand there's been some backpedaling. We'll be responsible for two-thirds of that cost, and the outside users will be responsible for a third of that cost. And I, and I can uh, honestly sit here and say that the people of LaVale, Eckert, and Frostburg Jennings Run and Mount Savage are not interested in funding this thing at the tune of $11 million or $12 million straddled on them. So if you would please, sir, if, and if you, if you guys are okay with this, I would like to see Paul talk with them because you as a city resident, do you, you know what that's going to do to your... <clears throat> yes, sir. I mean... <clears throat> we talk about not uh, being able to afford... Uh, Anyhow, yes, I'm in definitely consensus. And if I'm not mistaken, you have been in conversation with the city of Cumberland. I mean, this isn't just out of the blue that this just sprung up, correct? Once a year we have meetings because we're in a combined consent order between Frostburg, LaVale, Allegheny County, and Cumberland. So where are the meetings? It's kind of came to a head a little bit when they started. Um, we, we're solving our problems. Frostburg solving the problem. LaVale solving theirs. We thought this was Cumberland's solution, so it really wasn't something we should have had that was that was how they were approaching it but they brought up recently in the last year or so that we would be part of we as an Allegheny County and Frostburg etc would be paying for a share of this 30 million dollars so it's kind of changed so we had a discussion at pace about this um, that we weren't we thought they were heading down the wrong the wrong road and it would be the funding agencies have all said to us they don't know where 30 million dollars would come from so even if it was the correct solution there's not funding to do that but but that's only the first phase it's an correct. overall 90 million dollar project and that was just presented that's we were sleeping that was just presented to us in the recent memory too that this was the first phase i thought this was the one and only phase not the just the first of three when when when, when was the consent order uh, steve we're, we're, we had 20 it's 20 years so Okay, so we need, we need to make clear that this isn't this board of commissioners and it's not the council member and the, and the mayor of the city of Cumberland right now. We're talking a 20 year process here. And so um, it talks about, you know, either you handle the issue and you work at it a bit at a time 
or you kick the can down the road. And unfortunately, it sounds like the can has uh, come to roost in the city of Cumberland. So it's getting closer to down the road. Yep, we're just getting years well, closer. Well, ask, asking the taxpayers to foot one third, $30 million of a project that when I've got a commissioner here who eats, breathes, and sleeps water and sewer issues, tells me it doesn't, what they're doing doesn't work. It's not the correct plan of action and it doesn't take care of any of their infrastructure. If they had done what the city of Cumberland has done, I mean, city of Frostburg has done, you'd actually have some roads in the city of Cumberland that would be paved because they would have been taking different sections. It would have taken longer. It would have taken smaller bites, but there would actually be roads that would be fixed in the city of Cumberland. So, yeah, I would like to reach out. I mean, we have a very good relationship staff level. John Afonso, actually, I worked for City Come a long time, considering him a, a friend. Um, I would like to try to reach out for our departments and all the engineers to get together to try to get a, a more viable solution. I think that's that a great idea. Roads. Please take the lead on that. Okay. Please and, take and the lead. See, I think it's going to take a series of long meetings between us internally and then get the state and the EPA involved because to throw out a, th a $90 million solution for a county that has 70 some thousand people is, to me, is insanity. Whether it's a correct mm -hmm. procedure or not, it's not possible. But we'd be happy to, and hopefully we'll have a series of meetings. And, and I didn't, I, I, I have to echo your comments. I didn't like that we were invited to a meeting on Friday afternoon that was going to be Wednesday when there was a lot of people from Baltimore coming too. So I know that meeting, I suspect, was scheduled beforehand. We would like to have input at right. in that meeting. Because, you know, when I was sitting right there with Senator Edwards, when, when he said we need to have s some other meetings about this to make sure that everybody involved is at the table. I mean, I was sitting right there and heard the senator say that, and we went back with the intention of thinking, well, we'll here within the next three or four weeks something will happen we'll be notified then we didn't hear nothing didn't hear nothing and we never did get an email on it at all period and then i found out about it monday morning from uh, through a, a different gentleman there was a meeting wednesday to, to me it's a simple solution we'll reach out and hopefully we can work to some good solution in the future but it, it, there's x amount of dollars to solve your problems and if we dump all that money into solving this problem the other issues that we have education roads bridges etc where are you going to get money for that? So that's, that's kind of the way I look at that. Paul, uh, NDE, uh, the representatives that day had indicated that the pot of money that we've been relying upon in a lot of jurisdictions across the state have been relying upon annually uh, to his department is about $5 million. That's about it. Across the state, and yeah. if you remember, USDA at Pace said they get $3 million for the same jurisdiction. So would you okay. do the math, you know, if they provided and, all those funds, we'd be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the only last little tidbit before we move on, if, if I may, sir, it, it, is that um, in our delegation, Delegate Wendell Beitzel is also a water and sewer wonk. And when he confirms what Commissioner Brody has been saying, that just tells me that we've got to get everyone together and we've got to figure out a better plan because mm -hmm. the city of Cumberland or the county residents cannot afford a $90 million project. And we'd love to get down this road as a partnership, not, exactly. not start a fight with each other. No, 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 yeah, no absolutely. absolutely. That. That's what yes. it, need, it needs to be done. So please reach out. Thank you, Commissioner. Certainly. Anything else? I mean, not, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, not till next next week. We, we got some other issues that's going to start coming a week at a time now. So. And we'll keep you informed as the progress moves along. We'll have a number of individuals, so hopefully we can keep going. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. Commissioner Valentine? Uh, just a few quick things on some of the legislative issues. <clears throat> we've talked about here in the past couple of weeks um, the <clears throat> marijuana decriminalization bill is now officially dead for this year I'm sure it'll come up next year they're doing a, a uh, summer study on on that um, the minimum wage bill did pass exactly as the governor wanted it so overnight uh, once the law becomes effective the minimum wage will go from 725 to $10.10 .10 an hour. And uh, they did actually vote to uh, send money for pothole repairs to every county since they, since they took all the highway user funds and they know the roads are in such terrible shape from the rough winter we had. Instead of actually returning highway user funds, they said, here's some money to go fix your pothole. So that, that was very generous of them. <laughs> We'll spend it. <laughs> I think that's a tune of about $238,000. And when you have the, the amount of roads that we have in the county, as well as the town and municipalities that 
that's not going to go very far at all. It's actually insulting. Almost I think as, that would um, actually cover the uh, bottom end of Packer Street there. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. it's almost as insulting when they send the town of Luke $238. And Route 135 is one of the most heaviest trafficked truck traffic roads. And here you go, here's $238. So there, there again, when you pass a law, Highway user funds is supposed to be used for bridges and roads. Don't rate it and use it for something else. Use what it was designed for. It was an agreement way back in what year? 1927. When the county and the state came together and the county said, okay, we'll accept this, but we're gonna work together as a team. And um, unfortunately, the state has uh, let us down. Anyhow, okay. that has been put out in the Cumberland Times News over the past month, month and a half concerning our historical institution and the county commissioners. Um, there's been a variety of editorials uh, by individuals that seem to think, um, for sake of a better phrase, we may be in cahoots with the commissioners on some type of uh, financial dealing and there could be nothing further from the truth. Uh, for 31 years, the Cumberland Historic Cemetery Organization has operated completely with private funding. I have survived multiple boards of commissioners, multiple Cumberland mayor and city councils, both Republican and Democrat alike. And I have come for years and decades asking that all groups not receive any money. If we can do it, they can do it. Uh, for example, in 1989, I remember I stood before the late Mayor Wyckoff and I told him, the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad will always depend on public money. Oh no, Mr. Taylor, that's not true. Well, the last I looked at the calendar, it's 2014, Mayor Wyckoff's been dead and gone for quite some time and they're still using public money. So uh, it's been kind of a consensus among our members and myself that we ask for a small stipend from the city and the county. And, uh, and when I mean small, we're talking less than $10,000 to maintain more than 11 historic cemeteries in Allegheny County, Maryland. Uh, these cemeteries are all maintained by uh, volunteer members such as Dale Burgess here, it's with me, and his lovely wife, Linda. Uh, they work on the Flintstone Cemetery that we own on Murley's Branch Road in Flintstone. And these cemeteries are all over the county. We have erected over 850 monuments and they are in almost every cemetery in Allegheny County and even in various states. And the list would go on and on and on. We are also an organization that does not have anyone on the payroll. And many of the organizations that are historic in nature, that have been involved in tourism over the years, almost all of them have people on the payroll. And we're not just talking one or two people, we're talking multiple people. And there is never going to be anybody on the payroll of the Cumberland Historic Cemetery Organization. But ever since this news broke about a month or so ago, um, we have people like Kimmy Scott McGreevy that feel that they need to more or less lie in their editorials, uh, such as the one that was in yesterday's paper, if anyone wants to take a look at that, um, and uh, talking about education, but somehow evolving the editorial around to the Cumberland Historic Cemetery Organization that uh, Mr. McKay is rewarding his friends. And I just wanna state in public and on the public record and for the media, and let's hope this is gonna be on the front page of the paper, just like uh, the two articles that appeared about a month ago. In 31 years, we have never made the front page of the Cumberland Times News. But when this article broke about a month ago, we were on the front page twice in one week. I found that amazing. And uh, it's, it's very irritating. And then there's other organizations that call us racist, even though we are the first organization in Maryland history to build Maryland's first black Union Civil War monument in the state of Maryland. And that's back in 1991 over at Sumner Cemetery, which I invite you all to go see. But um, these are some of the things I felt it was very important to come here tonight and clear up. 
And uh, for all these folks out there throwing stones, they need to take a look at their own home and their own nest of all the money and all the decades that they have gobbled up of the taxpayers too. And we are still uh, continuing to search for a very small stipend from the county. Uh, we are well aware of what a horrible Barack Hussein Obama economy we are in. I am 50 years old and I have never seen this economy in worse shape. Uh, this makes Jimmy Carter look like a Wall Street wizard. And um, I mean, it's just appalling of what's going on. But take a look at the groups that are out there doing the name calling. These are all the leftist liberal groups that have gobbled up hundreds of thousands of dollars over the decades. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. OK. I'd like to remind everyone that our next public business meeting will be Thursday, April the 10th, 2014, 5 o'clock right here in room 100. Remind everyone to see the news release for both the fiscal year 2015 budget schedule as well as the Allegheny County Comprehensive Plan public hearing. I'd like to thank you for taking place in your uh, government and we hope you have a nice evening. Thank you.